Well, for more tonight, I'm joined by Ben, ben Talib Blue. He is from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. That's a think tank and a registered lobby organization in the U.S. He joins me tonight from Washington. It's good to have you on the show. You have been a vocal supporter of Trump's campaign of maximum pressure on Iran. Has that policy resulted in a maximum response from Iran, that being Iran wanting even more to have a nuclear bomb? Well, great to be with you. I'm a supporter of the policy of maximum pressure because the Islamic Republic of Iran has only seldom changed its security policy, and it's only changed its security policy in the 41 years it's been in existence when confronted with maximum pressure. A good case study, of course, is the end of the Iran-Iraq War in 1988. As it relates to the nuclear deal, uh, Trump is still seeking a bigger, broader, better deal. And maximum pressure is yet to deliver Iranians to the table. Uh, but let's not forget that these sanctions have been in place now for over a year, year and a half. Mm. But they've had the macroeconomic impact that is much greater than the past generation or decade of multilateral sanctions. So to me, it's still more a question of uh, when Tehran may come to the table, not if Tehran comes to the table. Well, then let's talk about what, what we've seen in the last couple of years. We've seen hawks in the administration. I'm thinking of the former national security advisor, John Bolton who have been pushing for a military confrontation with Iran. But Donald Trump, he has resisted that. Has that been a disappointment? Well, I think a military confrontation that the U.S. would force upon Iran would be a gross mistake. And in fact, even responding to Iranian kinetic or overt military escalation with strikes on Iranian territory physically uh, would also be uh, a mistake. What would not be a mistake would be using force judiciously to Iranian escalation in the region. I think that would merit uh, the use of force. And I think Iraq is an example, the Persian Gulf is an example, Syria is an example, where, where the use of force is possible responsibly and judiciously. I think right now to start a conflict, which fortunately the administration is not looking to even start, uh, would be imprudent. I don't think John Bolton, though, to be clear, in those instances when he did have a disagreement with the president, was looking to initiate a conflict. I think he was looking to respond to Iranian escalation. If you remember where they diverged, I believe it was in response to the downing of the American drone late uh, mid last summer. Well, I was just thinking of the, the quote from Mr. Bolton where he said we should bomb the you know what out of them. But uh, let me ask you, looking forward to the U.S. presidential election, um, what will a victory for Joe Biden, what will that mean um, for U.S. policy in Iran? Well, a, a Joe Biden administration would have to be particularly careful because there would be a temptation, of course, to reverse 180 from President Trump and rejoin mul various multilateral agreements, be it arms control or environmental, that the Trump administration has left. But to do so only for the purposes of domestic politics would yield only one clear winner not Republicans and not Democrats. The clear winner there would be the Islamic Republic of Iran because a unilateral embrace on its face of the JCPOA while Iranian violations are increasing, while Iranian bad behavior is increasing, would only reward that bad behavior. And forget, of course, that America works best when it has its partners behind it as part of a concerted series uh, of, of escalating pressure. So I think if there's a Biden administration, they need to rebuild the international coalition on Iran. They need to capitalize on the time to Trump took off of the Iran deal and had this maximum pressure campaign and wield uh, the prospect of sanctions relief effectively yeah. to get first a change in behavior by Iran. Well, ben, let me ask you, we've got about 30 seconds here. Um, what can the United States bring to the table to convince its European partners to change their stance on the Iran nuclear deal? They haven't changed it in the last five years. Well, the most important party that I think is going to slowly change Europe's view is not even the United States. It's going to be the International Atomic Energy Agency. You've seen a steady coarsening of their position on Iran because Iran is not just in violation of the JCPOA. Iran is in violation of larger non-proliferation agreements. And it's this new kind of reporting since March we've seen from the IEA that could deliver a, a, a bridging of this transatlantic gap between Europe and America and perhaps multilateralize max pressure or get more multilateral support for a bigger, broader, better deal. Ben and Ben Tali Blue from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies joining us tonight from Washington. Ben, we appreciate your time and your insights tonight. Thank you.